Yes, Simon, I mean, you're right. I mean, uh, <clears throat> the number of times he's, he scored over 200 last year is just unbelievable. In fact, he, in the semi-final last year against Alex Liu, he went through the 500 barrier with two games of 250 plus. So he kind of likes this lane. Well, let's not forget the uh, 75 maximums, the 75 300 games that Barnes has bowled on record. We'd like to see another one of those. Uh, good to start talking about the maximums nice and early. We've had one, Jason Belmonte, a couple of years ago. And that'll do as a start from Chris Barnes. That's just started for 12, isn't it? Another 11 of those and we have the 300 go. You make it sound so easy. Well, actually, some of these... You sit and watch a few 300 games. Some of these bowlers do make it look rather easy. They seem to get locked in and loaded. Get the pin action, and they just sail through 12 strikes in a row. In fact, I've, ever, I've actually seen uh, two 300s back to back from an old friend of ours from the Masters many years ago, Mr. Purvis Granger. Never nervous, Purvis. Recently had back to back 300 games in a tournament down in the Philippines. Good work, nice comeback from Zara. Responds to Barnes' strike with her own. Well, you talked about the, the bowlers making it look easy and guess an appropriate time to talk about the quality cast of this field oh unbelievable this is one of the best uh, fields we've had in this uh, party poker uh, world Tempe masters field I've counted I think 11 former or current world champions plus uh, Chris Barnes from the PBA who recently finished uh, second in the uh, PBA world championships a couple of weeks ago and he uh, rings himself another strike so he starts with a double in game two extending that lead over Glover. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a who's who up in the bowler's green room. Fascinating as well when you get talking to these guys and talking to them about their sport, about the lane condition, about the form that they're in. It's, uh, there's a tremendous amount that you can learn. And the bowler's so accessible at this tournament. Very easy for uh, the fans to get to talk to them. Great work, so Zara Glover doubles it up as well, just that uh, spare at the start, the blot on her scorecard so far. Yeah, nice little shot, nice and high on the head pin. Not too much hook and carried all ten very nicely indeed. Actually, someone you were saying about the players in the green in the players' room, in the green room, we'll call it. Uh, actually, there's many of them sitting in the players' area in the uh, arena tonight. Obviously, with respect, I'm going to watch Chris Barnes. Uh, Shoots some big numbers, and that's another one. Three strikes in a row for Barnes, right out the trap. And he's looking pretty hot. Yeah, Chris Barnes appears as favourite player on quite a few of the profile forms that uh, get filled in and handed to us as commentators, and it's no surprise to see most of the bowlers out here watching one of their heroes in action against Zara Glover. Simon, he's actually got lined up from the end of game number one, where he finished with six strikes. And he's carried straight into game two with another three, so that's actually nine strikes in a row. He's already bowled. Uh, it's just unbelievable stuff. But uh, Glover in there fighting. Oh, three in a row for Zara. Well done, Zara. Well, by far, this is one of her best Tempin Masters performances. As I said, she's never made it past the first round, but uh, giving a really good account of herself here. I think the pressure's off, isn't it? There's. Uh, there's not too much pressure playing against someone like Chris Barnes. you just got to get him, get out there and play your game. I think she would like to finish with a reasonable game and walk away and say, well, I've done my best, and if she can finish with 220 this game, it would certainly be no shame. Barnes, Barnes. Barnes, on the other hand, well, what potential has he got? He's on a 300 at this particular time. Yeah. He's shot nine strikes in a row. So uh, who's going to stop him? Well, the pins are. Well, it's the old devil ten pin, isn't it? Just a little bit uh, soft in the pocket there. But the reaction in the back end have all turned up quite nicely. Didn't quite hit with the uh, velocity to uh, kick that ten pin away. Yeah, you put the commentator's curse on him there, Cass. Yeah, it's a job that's normally reserved for Nick Hawley, who uh, <laughs> unfortunately can't be with us this uh, tournament. Uh, Nick will be watching this one with interest. Some great names at this tournament, some great names on the lane at the moment, but it's one man, this man, Chris Barnes. Despite the reaction on his face, he is dominating this match. 
Glover then working a turkey at the moment. This for four. Oh, this for the leaves, that one. Well, she's done that a couple of times tonight now. Bounced the ball. She bounced uh, a spare ball earlier. And she really threw that one down as well. Yeah, the ball's just dropped off the hand here. There's the double bounce. Didn't get through the ball at all. And, of course, there's no rotation on it, and it's not going to hook up. Leaves the 1-2-4 and the 10-pin washout. It's the 10 in the corner that's going to cause the problem. Out comes that spare ball, the hard one. It should go uh, nice and straight to hit that head pin. Left-hand side and jump it across. Unfortunately, can't make it. Just takes out the three pins. An open frame after three strikes in a row is really not what Zara wanted to see. Disappointment for the, uh, for the domestic crowd here as well. We're rooting for Zara. But at the same time, they do like to see Chris Barnes uh, shoot lots of strikes. Yeah, that overall maximum dropping rapidly, 4-4-9. Four, four, That's just about what Barnes shot over two games last year when he took the title against Paul Moore. Yeah, 4.58 uh, he rolled last year in the final, 2.26 and a 2.32 against uh, Paul Moore. That's good bowling. It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, harsh. Barnes then to try and get back into uh, the rack, and he does so. His, his strikes are so concise, there's not a tremendous amount of mix and messing about, they all go down. Yeah, this is pretty much a bit of a bowling lesson here, he's uh, shown the crowd how good he is. Um, some of the league bowlers in the UK and tournament players know exactly how good he is, we've seen him before, and of course he's Masters champion. He's looking very relaxed. I started out in college, bowling for Wichita State, which is uh, one of the, the best university programs in the US. Uh, I fought my way kind of through ups and downs from the third team to the first team to the second team to the first team. Uh, learned a lot along the way and, and was able to turn that into a stint on Team USA for four years where I met many of the players that, that are in this tournament now. Uh, after that I went on the professional tour where I have eight titles uh, including the US Open and uh, been there for nine years. And so. And the greatest part about this tournament, I get to see a lot of the same players that I saw uh, when I was an amateur, and some of those guys have come over and bowled on the tour as well. So it's a, it's a much more social atmosphere, but the, the competition is still r really good here. My father took me bowling when I was about six years old. Uh, at that time it was uh, three games for about $1.50, which is a far cry from today. But uh, I grabbed a six-pound ball, and, and uh, he taught me the basics, and, and it kind of went from there. Well, I think we all gravitate to what we're good at, and over time that became the, the thing I was best at. But, uh, you know, having a ball and, and knocking down objects, I guess, is always, it, it was just something that was in me, and, it, and now I see the same thing in my twin boys. They, uh, they've they loved the game from the very beginning with, I mean, they have no idea what their mom and dad do, but, you know, they love to take a ball and knock down stuff. I think we've always had a strong desire to try and to, to win and uh, you know the thrill of competition is has always spurred me on um, you know I also I, I hate losing <laughs> and maybe for a long time I had a, had a big fear of losing so uh, that drove me in a lot of different ways so, uh, some more successful than others but now I, now I enjoy the competition and that's what that's what brings me back uh, I think my father actually inspired me to be successful I lost him when I was 10 uh, in a house fire and it, Basketball and bowling were his, were his two loves, and, and and so those are the two things that actually end up following the most. And and basketball peeled off uh, after high school, when I was wasn't genetically gifted enough to carry on. But uh, uh, the passion he had for sports and and for life and instilled in me, I think, is what's carried on to now. Because the competition is so tough, there's very little difference between between the competitors so small mistakes uh, can make a huge difference in the final result it makes it a much more stressful event when it's this short of format uh, the sprints don't allow for for any mistakes really at all and uh